Hi everyone, I'm Max Margalant and I'm here to talk about alpha and beta in finance. These are terms that are often used, so this video is mainly to clarify what alpha and beta really mean. Beta is traditionally market beta, which is something that comes from the capital asset pricing model, or the CAPM. The CAPM is an equilibrium style economic model for trying to calculate an appropriate return for some security or portfolio, given the risk-free rate and the returns of the market. Now, we don't take the equilibrium part of the CAPM out of it, but we do take this expression, this quantification of the influence of the market, and we bring it into something called factor modeling. So generally what we do is we express the returns of our portfolio or of some stock in terms of the returns of the market and alpha and intercept term. So what we get out of this, usually using a linear regression, is a beta coefficient for the influence of the market on our stock or portfolio. So we're literally quantifying how much of our return comes from the market itself. And in this case, our alpha is what is left over after we remove the influence of the market. Now this is a very simple view to take, that every single security and every single portfolio can only be expressed as some decomposition of the market and something else that we can't quite explain. So there are a number of extensions to just plain market beta. One of the most notable ones is the Fama French factors, where we add in SMB, small minus big, and HML, high minus low, which are small market cap minus big market cap, and high book to price ratio minus low book to price ratio. These are additional common risk factors that people have quantified as a common influence in the market. So what we do is we take the returns of our portfolio or of the stock that we're trying to analyze, and we break them down in terms of beta times uh, the returns of high minus low, beta times the returns of small minus big, and beta times the returns of the market. And then this alpha, this intercept term. Again, alpha here is what is left over after we quantify the influence of the three common risk factors that we have in here. Now we can extend this notion of adding in common risk factors to as many individual risk factors that we want. For instance, the Quantopian risk model is composed of 16 risk factors, 11 individual sectors, and five styles. And alpha only really makes sense in the context of what our common factor risks are. We have the common notion of market beta, that's one common risk, but we can quantify these however we like. Whatever we are concerned about as an influence in our portfolio, we can add as a common factor risk, and then alpha is what is left over afterwards. Now, alpha is generally what people want when they're trading. Alpha is what's left over, right? It's independent of these many different individual common risk factors. So if you can get something that's truly an alpha portfolio, then you are trading something novel. You're trading something interesting. And that's one of the most surefire ways to make your overall portfolio better, to add in a totally uncorrelated return stream.